myself dr raman navinal professor in electronics and communication engineering department i am taking the subject microwaves and antennas the subject code is uh, 17 ec 71 uh, the objective of this particular uh, subject is describe the microwave devices and its uh, applications and the second objective is describe the microwave properties and uh, transmission modes and understand the basic of antenna theories and selection of antenna for specific applications the meaning of all these particular things once we will go back to the first objectives describe the microwave devices that would say that for the micro uh, uh, applications we are having the various type of the devices and the components and here we are studying so the functional operations functions characteristic and advantages and disadvantages of various micro devices and their applications and second uh, object is saying that describe the micro properties and the transmission lines here we are uh, studying so what are the different properties of this particular uh, microwaves and the transmission modes how this particular microwaves can be transmitted from one place to the other place okay and how the uh, microwaves are uh, transmitted and the third uh, one is understand the basics of antenna theory understand the basics of antenna theory means how the antenna converts an electrical signal into electromagnetic signals and how an antenna converts an electromagnetic signal back into an electrical signal that is how we are transmitting antenna works and how we are receiving antenna works what is the basic concept or the theory uh, behind this one we are studying in this and then selection of the antenna for a specific applications okay because uh, the different applications will need or require different types of the antennas and how to select uh, a particular antennas for a particular type of the applications and this subject is having uh, five modules okay now let us uh, start with the first module that is uh, vacuum tubes and the transmission lines consider the electromagnetic is consisting of various frequency bands starting from a low frequency to the very high frequency ranges and on the electromagnetic spectrum you know different frequency ranges are used for the a uh, different uh, purposes low frequency uh, 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 signals are used for some purposes medium frequency signals are used for other purposes similarly other frequency ranges are used for uh, different applications now so the microwaves are the range of frequencies uh, varying from 1 gigahertz onwards to a uh, 100 gigahertz and the wavelength of this particular microwave frequency is 3 cm to the uh, 0.3 cm okay when we are measuring in terms of frequencies we are measuring in terms of gigahertz because the frequency range very high and when we are measuring in terms of the wavelength we are measuring in terms of the centimeters okay and so these are the conventional uh, vacuum tubes so these conventional electro uh, vacuum tubes we are not using okay in place of this conventional vacuum uh, tubes nowadays we are using this uh, transistors okay either your npn transistor or the pn star sisters so this is under the enlarged view of for that vacuum tubes here this is showing you the uh, internal structure of these vacuum tubes okay now so this is just a general functioning of this vacuum tubes the vacuum tubes what they are they are basically a three terminal devices so the three terminal devices are called as one is anode another one is a cathode another one is a grid and these are the are called as a filaments okay so this uh, cathode uh, what you are having it is nothing but your uh, emitter of your today's transistors and this base is nothing but this grid is nothing but the base of your uh, today's transistors this anode is nothing but the collector of the today's transistors okay so here so in the vacuum tube is connected this uh, uh, cathode when this uh, when, the, when you apply the respective voltages so this filaments get heated this heat energy will be transferred to this particular cathode so cathode starts emitting the electrons and these electrons will be toward the uh, 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 plate and this plate will collect uh, this particular electrons this electrons move then the current starts flowing this and the num- the number of electrons which are moving from this ca- cathode to the anode will be controlled by this control grid whatever the voltage you are applying here so these conventional uh, vacuum tubes are having some of the disadvantages so, so these we are not using for the micro purposes so the drawback of this particular uh, uh, 
conventional vacuum tubes are one is inter electrode capacitance another one is the lead conductance effect and the third one is the transit time effect and the fourth one is gain bandwidth limitations and the fifth one is effect of rf losses and the sixth one is uh, effect due to the radiation losses the conventional vacuum tubes if you consider so this is my grid so this is called as a grid and this is called as a plate or we are calling it as anode and this is we are calling it as a cathode now so all these three are the conducting plates all these three are the conducting plates and now if this particular conducting plant in between this plate and this particular plate here a vacuum is there so between this plate and this particular plate here a vacuum is there and between between this plate and this plate once again a vacuum is present now as you know so when any tube conducting uh, plates which are separated by a vacuum so here a capacitor uh, effect will be created so whatever the capacitors now exiting in this particular so they are called as inter electrode capacitors now here we will come across the three types of the capacitors one capacitor is existing here so in between uh, this one okay and one more capacitor is existing in between uh, so these particular plates and one more capacitor is existing okay in this particular things okay so this particular capacitor we are calling it as cgk so that is between the capacitor and the that is the capacitors between gate and the cathodes and this particular things we are calling it as a cgp so that is a capacitor between plate and the gate and so this is how we are calling it as a uh, cp Okay, so that is the capacitor between uh, the plate and the cathodes. Okay, this is how. So that means uh, the three types of the capacitors will exist, and they will affect the performance of uh, the conventional vacuum tubes when you are using it for the high, uh, high frequency application. That is the microwaves. Let us see. As you know, so the capacitive reactance is given by one by two pi f into c. Okay, now. 1 by 2 pi f let us consider now 1 by 2 f now as the frequency goes on uh, increases okay as the uh, as the frequency goes on increases what is happening is that the capacitive because it is inversely proportional to with each other so the capacitive uh, reactance goes on decreases okay at one particular frequency range okay at one particular frequency range so this reactance becomes zero when this particular reactance becomes zero because the numerator goes on increases one by high term so it is going uh, because it is goes on increasing the value goes on decreases so that is that is that when the reactance becomes almost nearly equal to zero what happens is that so this is acting as a short circuit and this acts as a short circuit and this acts as a short circuit okay and in any electronic circuits we are not preparing a short circuit because short circuit will be created okay so therefore so these particular conventional vacuum tubes cannot be used for the high frequency applications and the second thing is that as you know so these are the conducting play uh, conducting grids or the wires are there so themselves contain an inductance okay so this inductance we are calling it as Lead inductance. Okay. Now, as you know, so the inductive reactance is given by two pi f. Okay. Now here the reactance is directly proportional to the frequency. Now as the frequency goes on increases. Okay. As the frequency goes on increases, so the inductive reactance. that is the reactance offered by inductance what are the inductances present in this particular things offered by this particular grids will okay increase as because what happening is that as the inductive reactance uh, is goes on increasing it affects the upper frequency limit of this particular grid because as the reactance goes on increasing then the current flow current flow into this particular goes on decreases okay so because of this particular reason both the inductance and the capacitance effect which are present in this particular conventional tube will degrade the performance of this particular vacuum tubes and it reduces the efficiency and the power output given by this particular devices because for the micro applications we need a high power output
and the third effect is the transit time effect transit to time effect okay now let us first see what is the transit uh, time what is meant by the transit time and how it affect the performance of this particular device now the transit time means now as you can observe it here so the electrons which are emitted by the this particular cathode to move toward this particular play, a plate so that is from this particular point to this particular point the electrons have to move the movement of these electrons from this point to this particular point requires certain amount of the time because at time instant t0 suppose the electrons are emitted from this particular cathode and to reach to this particular plate it requires a some time that is t1 okay now so this t1 minus t0 okay so that you are calling it as a transit time now this transit time at the low frequency applications doesn't have any effect so the electrons will move from a cathode to the anode and the current flowing this device functions but when the high frequency applications that is a microwaves are considered so this particular what is this particular transit time, uh, time is there so this transit time will have an effect on the movement of this particular electrons how it affect is that you can see here from this particular cathode so the electrons are moving in this particular directions and to this particular grid so we are applying a potential that is a positive potentials okay now because of the positive potential is applied here the electro electrons which are moving here they are negatively charged particles so therefore they are get attracted and they will move toward the plate but when high frequency applications are there what is happening is that because of this transit time effect so whatever the electrons are moving here okay the transit time effect in such a way by the elect by the time the electrons reaches to this particular place so the grid potential becomes negative okay i am repeating once again so when the electrons are moving from this particular cathode and they start from moving this particular plate but when the high frequency applications are there by the time the electrons are emitted from this particular cathode and move towards the grid when they, when they are about to reach to this particular grid so then the grid potential becomes negative okay so when the grid potential becomes negative and the electrons are of negatively charged particles whatever the, what happens is the electrons in turn are moving towards the plate so they will once again comes back to the cathode that means the electrons will move to and fro in this particular grid only so this will decrease the efficiency of this particular microwave tubes so this or this particular conventional vacuum tubes so therefore so the, uh, this uh, because of these particular reasons so these conventional vacuum tubes we are not using it for the microwave applications okay the transit time effect once again i am repeating the transit time is nothing but the time required for the electrons to move from cathode to the plate that means that at a time instant t0 the electrons are emitted from this and at the time instant t1 so the electrons reaches to this particular plate and the difference between the t1 minus t0 we are calling it as a transit time if the transit time is less the electrons will move from plate to uh, cathode to the plate but for high frequency application that the transit time is very uh, the transit time is large what happens is these electrons when they move towards this particular move through this particular grid so the grid potential changes when the grid potential changes so therefore the grid potential becomes a negative and electrons are also of negatively charged particles they will repel each other and the electrons will move in this particular space only and the no electrons will move toward the plate but few electrons will move toward the plate and they will and the current starts flowing but the current is of very smaller values so therefore the efficiency of this particular uh, vacuum tubes in the micro application is less and the power developed is also less so therefore for the micro applications so these conventional vacuum tubes we are not using okay the major reason for not using this far one is electrical capacitance second one is uh, lead conductance third one is the transit time effect so these will affect the performance of these particular devices so therefore we are not using these particular devices in the microwave applications so, to generate the signals at the microwave ranges <coughs> a special type of the uh, devices are the tubes tubes are available so so those particular tubes are called as uh, m type of the tubes and the o type of the tubes and 
For the MWA tubes are not uh, specified in your modules, so therefore not dealing with this. And only and the clutter scanner are only the uh, linear uh, beam type of the tubes, and also they are called as the O type of the tubes. Okay, I'm repeating once again. There are two types of the micro tubes are there to generate the micro signals. One is the M type of the tubes, and another one is the O type of the tubes. Okay, and now in the O type of the tubes, once again they are depending upon how the device functions, what are the properties, how the signals are get generated. So they are uh, separated into different categories. One is the cavity type of the tubes, another one is the slow wave type of the tubes. In the cavity types of the tubes, we are having a resonant cavity type of the tubes and a clistrons and the reflect cristron. Okay, and that means in the cristron we are having a single cristron and the multi cristron systems. In the slow wave type of the tubes, we are having a forward wave tubes and the backward wave tubes and helix TWT that is a traveling wave tube, backward wave amplifiers and the backward wave oscillators and coupled cavity TWT. Okay, so that is depending upon the functions, properties and the characteristics, output powers generated by the devices and depending upon the efficiency, we are classifying that O type of the tubes into a, so these many number of categories. Okay, for the module is considered, we are dealing with only the clistron uh, and the reflect clistrons. Let us see uh, how, uh, how this particular clistron and the reflect clistron functions and how they will generate uh, the micro signals. Okay, now, so for the, there are two basic configurations are available in the clistron tubes and these are basically micro tubes. One is the reflex uh, clistron. It is used as a low power microwave oscillators and the other one is a multi-cavity clistron. It is used as a low power microwave amplifiers. That means to say that one tube is used for the generation of oscillations and the multi-cavity clistron tube is used for the, generation, uh, used for the amplification of microwave signals. Okay, and now, so before going to the functioning of these particular devices, let us see some of the images, okay, or the photographs of these particular uh, micro devices. Now, this is the first clistron which has been developed in the earlier years. So, this is the picture you can observe, okay, and the second image I will show you. So, this is the other image of this particular uh, uh, clistrons, and you will see one more image just for illustration purposes. And this is another uh, reflex crystal which is generating uh, at the power of uh, 400 kilowatts because uh, these are the reflex crystals are uh, developed or designed with a different uh, power outputs, okay, starting from uh, kilowatts to megawatts of powers. And what are the reflex crystal which has been uh, shown in this particular diagram, which is generating the power of uh, 400 and 400 kilowatts. Okay, and what are the diagrams which are, uh, what are the images you have seen? So the internal diagram of this particular uh, uh, reflex testron which has been shown in here. And the, uh, both the diagrams looks, uh, both the diagrams are same. Okay, only for, to, in order to explain the function of this particular devices, I have shown the uh, two diagrams, but one diagram is sufficient for you to uh, define the explanation of this. Now, let us see the construction details of this particular uh, reflex testron. So this construction detail, this is basically a vacuum tube, okay? And here you are having a cathode and these are the heating element, okay? Okay, so these, these heating elements are required here because when the heating elements are get heated, so that the heat energy will be transferred to this particular cathode, then the cathode emits the electrons. And here, so we are having one more terminal, okay, conventional vacuum tube if you observe, same cathode is here, same plate is here, instead of calling it as a plate or the anode, we will call it as a repellers, okay. And here, instead of the control grid, if you consider the conventional structure of the conventional vacuum tubes, instead of the control grid, here we are having a cavities. Okay. Now, to operate these particular devices, we are supposed to apply the sum of the voltages. Now, we closely observe in this. For this, okay, the positive voltage is applied and for these particular things, a negative voltage is applied. The same structural organization is shown here. So, the same diagram is there. Only the, these blue lines, okay, arrow marked what are the blue lines are there. So, that the only extra thing has been shown in this. Okay. We'll, uh, 
I'll tell you what is this particular meaning of this particular blue lines uh, with the arrow mark what I've been shown here. Okay. And whatever the oscillations are produced uh, in this particular, uh, with the help of this particular device, will be connected. So by uh, they have got RF output here. That is a radio frequency signals which are generated inside this particular tube will be taken from this RF output. Or in this particular diagram, it is shown as a pickup loop. From the pickup loop, so these are uh, output is get connected. Now let us consider the functioning of this. So the basic assumption uh, we are supposed to make in order to explain the operation of this particular device is that whenever this particular device is, uh, gets connected, okay, gets connected and all the voltage are applied here, okay, due to the transients, okay, or due to the generation of the noise signals present here, so some amount of oscillation is produced. Okay, remember here, here in order to explain the operation of this particular device, we are supposed to make one assumption. That assumption is that when you, are up, when you uh, connect this particular uh, the device with the appropriate voltages, due to the transients or a noise signals, here inside this, a small amount of oscillations are produced. Okay, and next one is that. So this is, these cavities, we are calling it as a resonant cavity. And these cavities are having a certain resonant frequency. As you know, for the other it is of a, as a resonant circuit is there, it is having a certain high values at a resonant frequency. Here also, whenever this particular cavity is having a, its resonant frequency at that particular time, so whatever the small oscillations are there, so they are amplified, uh, they are increased to a higher values. Okay, now. With these particular assumptions, now let us connect the operations. Now, so this cathode is applied with voltage and the heating element has applied with voltage. The heating element starts heating when you apply the voltages. When it gets heated, so the heat energy will be transferred to this particular cathode. When the heat energy transferred to this particular cathode, what it will do? It emits the electrons. Okay, as your conventional uh, uh, transistors, emitter emits the electrons. Here also, so uh, cathode starts emitting the electrons. So these electrons, now this what are the dotted lines are there. So these electrons will move toward the repellers. What are this particular plate? So this particular uh, terminal we are calling it as a repeller. When they will move toward this particular plate, now uh, observe here. So they are supposed to pass this particular gap. That is a grid gap will be there. Okay, when they are moving through this here, so they are supposed to pass through this particular grid gap. So the grid gap you consider here, so to the, this particular grid, you are applied to the certain potentials. That means that here you are having a field. Okay, so here a field will be present here. Whenever this particular electrons passes through this particular grid, Okay, so what is happening is that a one particular concept is there, so that is velocity modulations. That means to say that, so these reflex cations will operate on the principle of velocity modulations. Okay, next I will show you the, some diagrams, so what, how that velocity modulation takes place. Now let us consider that particular says, so when these electrons are moving toward this particular plate, at this particular space, so these electrons are bunched together. Okay, that means a bunching effect will uh, occurs, and when many number of electrons are bunched together, so these bunched electrons will move toward the repeller plates. Okay, as you know, you can observe it here. So this is applied to the negative potential, and your electrons are also negative, uh, negative only charged particles. Negative and negative will repel each other, so they will come back. Okay, that means the electrons are moving in these directions and the electrons are once again coming in this direction. So that is a to and fro um, uh, a movement will be there. Okay, so this uh, you can compare with your simple pendulum uh, experiment uh, what you have studied in your uh, uh, first fish or the second fish somewhere because two and fro motions will produce the oscillations. Now, here the electrons are moving in these directions and the electrons are moving in this one. That means whatever the bunched electrons are there, they will move toward the repeller and they will come back. When they are coming back, so what happens is that, so when, uh, when whatever the energy, so these electrons got at the gap space, so the, when they are coming back, so that particular energy will be converted back into the kinetic energy, so these energy will be transferred in the air and these energy will be collected by this particular probe that is the RF output. 
when they will transfer this particular energy so that will be collected by this one so that is going to give us the rf amplifier ampli uh, sorry rf outputs the oscillations now let us if you are not clearing about the a functioning of this let us come back to this particular diagram in order to better understand how this particular device works now instead of showing the electrons movement is so this is one electron this is one electron this is one electrons okay do don't think that there are only three electrons just for explanation purposes we are considering only three electrons so there are n number of electrons present now when these electrons are moving and they will move through this particular grid okay cavity gap so these electrons when they, when they will uh, cross this particular gap and what is happening is that so they will form a bunch because of this repeller voltage is applied the negative so they will be come back the same thing i told it here so they will move into the form of a, in the in the in the bunched form and they will uh, return it back and they will be collected by this rf output all these electrons will be moved back and it will be collected by so this rf pickup and here you are getting the oscillations okay in order to better uh, understand uh, how the electrons are moving how they are bunched together and how they will repel okay so let us see okay this is the another diagram uh, for better illustration purposes so these electrons are moving in this in these directions now so this is the potential what it has been present at the cavity gap okay now closely look into this uh, just for understanding purposes we are considering only three electrons okay and whatever the effect we are, we are uh, i'm explaining it on the three electrons the same effect will be there for the n number of electrons if you closely observe here one electron is moving okay observe that particular point c here here one electron is moving observe the point a and here one electron is moving observe the point e okay now i'm starting from this particular point okay assume that so this electrons which has been emitted from this particular cathode i am moving in this directions so this electron is the first electrons emitted from this particular cathode and moving towards this repeller plate plus okay repeller plate and when this electrons comes here closely look here at the time it d equal to 0 it is occurring with the negative potential here because in the in the r what in the cavity gap whatever the potential is there it is a negative potential and the electrons are moving because of the negative potential and the electrons are also in negatively charged particles they uh, it tries to oppose each other that means to say that this potential restricts the velocity of the electrons which is moving towards this particular plate so that is opening as that what are the electrons when it come to the uh, cavity gap it moves with a slower velocity because that field tries to because the negative field tries to uh, decrease its velocity now come to the point b the second electrons which enters later so it is it is neither affected by having a positive potential or the negative potential a neutral potential is there with what velocity it is moving with the same velocity uh, it is passing through this particular gap and reaching here and the third electron if you observe here so third electron it has came late but if you observe here it is okay but with this positive potentials okay at that particular point that means when this third electron the electrons is emitted from this particular cathode when it passes through that particular gap the field present is a positive and the electrons are up negatively so they will attract each other that means that the velocity of this particular electron when it passes through this particular gap increases okay so it will increase now closely if you observe when these electrons one has come at the time instant t0 another has t1 another has t2 but when they pass through this particular gap the potential what through which they are passing sometimes negative sometimes positive and sometimes neutral but at some time when they pass through this particular gap so they will reach one particular point okay at particular instant of time so they are bunched together at a particular cycles now these bunched electrons will move towards the repeller plate so that such effect will be there on the electron that means thousands of electrons which are emitted from the particular cathodes they will pass through the particular gap depending upon negative potential positive potential or a neutral potentials they will form a, uh, in the uh, bunches okay they will they will move in the form of a group 
okay, towards the plate. But as a plate, uh, your uh, repeller is of negatively charged particles. Once again, they will come back. Okay, let us see this particular operation once again. The same thing because these are the different diagrams I am showing you too, just in order to understand the basic concept. Okay, so this electron is moving coming back because this voltage is applied is negative. So these electrons is moving, coming back with this it is applied. Okay. Now another example, just the same thing is here. Now let us see here. Okay. The more uh, expanded view of this one. The cavity gap voltages, if you observe it here, here I am getting the different bunching of the electrons. Okay. Now if you closely look at here, for the, so the electrons, at the time instant t, uh, Tc, okay, so it is uh, having uh, in the cavity gap a negative voltage is there. Even though this electrons has entered the gap first, but it is moving slowly because a negative potential. The electrons which are at Tb, okay, so it is having a neutral potential. It is normally with the uh, same velocity what it is from the M10, it is moving. And Ta, it is occurring with the positive velocity, it is velocity is get increased because the positive voltage the electrons are of negatively charged. But. So the, all these electrons are bunched together here. Okay. Now, so this is the bunching effect. And similarly, if you can observe here, so these electrons and these electrons and these electrons, so they are bunched together. Now these bunched electrons will move toward the plate or the repellers. Okay, repeller is applied to the negative potentials. Because of the negative potential, they will once again come back. When they came back, so what is happening is that whatever the energy they got when they are passing through this particular cavity gap, so this energy will be converted into a kinetic energy. So this kinetic energy is given back, okay, once again during the positive potential. And in the cavity, okay, uh, just before diagram, uh, earlier diagram is shown that a pickup, that output pickup point will be there. So the uh, output will be taken it back. Here what is happening, the electrons are moving and they are coming back. This to and fro uh, mo moment is going to give us the oscillations. Okay. This is the one more diagram. Uh, just there I have show, uh, shown only one electrons. Here the diagram is showing that n number of electrons okay, are moving from the cathode and they will form a bunch. Okay, bunch of electrons, uh, after passing through the gap, they will form a bunch, bunch of electrons move toward the cathodes. Okay, so the bunching effect you can observe in this particular diagram. 